Now, when we had to move, the possibility to say, okay, we can relocate some of these things to a distant place and avoid, avoid some of the uh, dispatch the transport costs. Um, the solution there was, okay, maybe we want to move it to the most distant place and we're going to do it, uh, the gas, we're going to transfer it by pipeline and not by truck, by tanker truck of the finished product so that that could save us some money. Um, and indeed, overall, having this um, solution for the numbers we had increased the expected value in this case for about 10, uh, for another 10%. But here's the kind of thing that happened is that in this case, to be able to en enable this flexibility, you had to invest in a pipeline and uh, that would cost some money. So under many cases, if you invested in it, but didn't use it, you'd have this extra cost so that uh, this pipeline solution uh, was at a disadvantage for all of these. They re remove, reduce the, expected value say from about 11 here for both the alternatives to something around let's call it eight or nine so it was a significant over a range here but on the other hand it was really great demand it was a very profitable one so you had a trade-off to happen so that very often as in this case if you were simply compare the red line and the green line it's not so obvious which is the better one or how you ought to uh, organize it so it, it does frequently happen, and you should expect it, that it's not always, well, one is uniformly better, this kind of effect where investing in the, in the flexibility has a cost. Uh, and just like I buy life insurance, um, not to be morbid about it, if I buy life insurance and I, every year goes by, I've lost money on my bet, but I'm very, in this case, I'm very happy with not uh, cash gain on my life insurance. Um, so uh, this has some uh, comparison and it uh, shows that the flexible uh, with the no move can increase not just the expected value, but also other kinds of measures which I suggest that we should be taking into account regularly, which is, for example, the value at risk. So um, both the flexible with and without the move increased the uh, improved the value at risk by uh, two or three times here in comparison with what was happening with the um, uh, fixed design. So the fixed design, you had a 10% value at risk of uh, 1.8 and here you increased it to five or this, uh, four basically. And the same thing with the upside, you had considerable possible improvement. So it's not just a unidimensional uni thing. It changes not just the averages, but the distribution of averages, on the one hand, reducing the risk and increasing the opportunities. Those are the kind of things that you would expect. Now let's think about learning rates. And so being a parametric study, not knowing what the learning rate might be on this kind of construction, we assumed there was either nothing or it had different rates. And what you can see is, again, this is part of the trade-off between uh, economy of the scale and learning. If you're learning uh, as you build modules, the later ones will be cheaper than the earlier ones. And so that it will decrease the overall cost of expansion. And this counterbalances the effect of, um, of uh, economies of scale and inf increases the effect of discount rates, which meaning that the further you build it out in the future, the less expensive it's going to be. And as you can um, uh, see here, or I was trying to illustrate here, that for the no move analysis, simply looking at changing the learning rate on the construction of the modules, it pushed out the maximum value you could have uh, at the far end of the, of the curve, meaning that if demand really grew and you build a lot, but you build it in the future and it basically came to you at a very cheap price, you had uh, tremendous advantages in terms of the expected value going from about 20 to about 50 in this particular case with these numbers. And I wouldn't put much attention to these numbers because there's not backed by a specific case, but it in shows 
And the intent of this is to show that there is that distribution of change and that the learning rate can be really very powerful. So even if it goes from five, zero, none to some 5%, which is fairly modest, it has a change from 20 to 28. So it's, it has a lot of leverage in there if there is uh, a learning rate. And this, if you're making cars, you're going from having produced 100,000 to 110,000, it's not very much. But if you're producing big units, such as in the Victoria desalting, and you go from building one your first time, you didn't know how to do it, to building the second and the third, the effect can be <coughs> really quite significant uh, when you're dealing in low numbers of units, when the modules you're talking about are in the uh, units, so single, single units, one, two, three, four, five, or even in the teens. So this can have, can have a huge effect, which is the point of this graph. So the general lesson three is the rep repetition of modules promotes learning, which is most Im impactful for initial replications. So learning can increase value significantly. Let me repeat the example that I think I cited earlier in the class, but I want to emphasize in this context, is when BP was building uh, platforms in um, uh, the RLC near Azerbaijan, uh, their first, they had, they, for a variety of circumstances having to do with contract disputes with designers and what have you, they ended up building three identical units of platforms which was very different from their traditional approach was to optimize, to, to have bespoke, tailor-made platforms for different sites where they had different expectations of the uh, fuel coming through or the product coming through at different times, different depths of water and so forth. And in that case, is the, the savings and labor costs were reported to be, I reported, I don't have the actual data for me, but it was reported, to be about 40%. People knew what was going to happen next. They had, could schedule things better. They um, changed a little bits of the way, they, the order in which they did assembly. Anyway, it was like you and me, we, if we ever did this, which I have, many of you have, put out a tent to go camping. The first time you do it, you make mistakes and don't know what you're doing. And by the time you've done it several times, you're a lot more efficient. So and maybe you can think of a lot of other examples of when you go from the first time to the second or third times, you sort of get to know the ropes and it, it happens. So that's the general lesson is that this can have uh, quite significant impacts, can have, may have, uh, it is um, not of course necessary. 